Hello everyone, this is the 7th video in the series of SPFX course. In the previous video, we have seen how we can perform the CRUD operation using SPHTP client. In this video, we are going to see how we can perform the CRUD operation using PNP. PNP is basically a package that contains the Fluent API which can be used to call the SharePoint REST services. PNP allows us to write less code and perform more tasks. So without further delay, let's get started. Hey everyone, my name is Mayuresh Zoshi and I am a writer at Office365Notes.com. On this blog, I write articles related to SharePoint and Power Platforms. So if you go to the SharePoint and SharePoint course, SPFX course, you can see a 7th link which is um, CRUD using PNP. If you click on that link, you will get landed to this article. In this article, I have explained step by step process on how we can perform the CRUD operation using PNP. The first step is uh, we, we need to create a folder and before that uh, we should have a SharePoint list named as employee details. So I'll open my SharePoint site. So under this site, I have already op uh, created an employee details list. And here you can see I have a default title column and I have just added one age column. So uh, just add the column age, we will use the title column to save the uh, full name and age column to add the age of the employee. So uh, the, the first step is then create a folder with the name SPFX CRUD PNP on your local drive. So I'll just open my uh, E drive and I'll create one folder here. You can use any drive. So I have used E drive and I have created a folder name SPFX CRUD PNP. Then the next step is we need to open this location in the command prompt. So uh, just copy this path and open the command prompt. Uh, firstly move to the E drive then change the directory and okay so we are now open that in command prompt. Next step is uh, scaffolding the SPFX solution using Yeoman Generator. In the previous sessions, I have explained you what is scaffolding, how we can use the Yeoman Generator to scaffold our web parts. So you can go to, uh, you can view those videos. So just copy this command in the command prompt and paste it and hit enter. So that will scaffold your SharePoint um, uh, SPFX solution. It will take some time. Okay, it took me two minutes uh, to start the scaffolding. Now it is asking me what will be the solution name. So here uh, I have used what are the different parameters that I have used. So if you see here, I have given the name of the solution as spfx-crud-pnp. So let's use the same. Then which baseline package do you want to target? So I'll use SharePoint Online for now. I will use the current folder. Then I'll use the default options here. I'll use the web part. Then what is your web part name? Here also I will use spfx-crud-pnp. What is the web part description? I'll keep it default. I'll use the React framework. Now it has started scaffolding the solution. It will again take some time. Okay, as you can see now, uh, our scaffolding of the solution is completed. It took me around 10 minutes to get scaffolded. Uh, this time period is based on your internet speed. So let's see what is the next step. So once the solution, 
now we need to open the solution in VS Code. Yeah, now you can see under this SPFX curl PNP folder, all these uh, files and folders got created using human generator. This is called this is called scaffolding. Now we need to open this solution in Visual Studio Code. So either you can directly open in uh, like this way, or you can just type code space dot, and this will open the respective solution opened in VS code so let's see what is the next step then the sixth step is in this SharePoint framework web part we are going to use PNP JS for performing CRUD operations therefore we need to install the PNP so to install the PNP module we need to execute this script npm i i stands for install and the module name is at the rate PNP slash sp so just copy this command and paste it here and hit enter so this will again take some time okay now as you can see added eight packages from two contributors that means our uh, pnp module is installed now let's see what is the next step once the pnp module is installed you can see the message yeah we have seen next step is we are going to write the entire logic for CRUD operation using in 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 the TSX file so as we have used the uh, react framework we have these uh, different files under web part folder which is TSX file and TS file so if you open the TSX file here you can see the uh, vanilla uh, JSX that is the uh, plain JSX that they have uh, automatically provided for the hello world web part so we will uh, work in this file only now uh, in PNP it is very easy to set up the SPFX context so uh, as, as we are going to write our logic in the TSX file we need the context of the SharePoint in that file because uh, the SharePoint context is needed when we need to interact with the SharePoint so um, to, to define the context of the SharePoint we can use the uh, on init method so uh, I have explained that step in the step 9 in PNP, it is very easy to set up the SPFX context. Just import the SP module and in the on init method, we have to update the code. So let's import this file first. So open the TS, TS file and just give the import here. Okay. Now the next step is uh, adding the on init method. So as you can see, uh, I have given it here. Just copy this and you can paste it here on init method before the render function. So uh, on init method uh, basically runs um, at at very initial stage, even before the render method. So uh, after that, uh, next step is update the tsx file with the below jsx so jsx is basically a react way of writing html and javascript so here uh, i have written the jsx that is needed so uh, let me explain you that for example uh, we are going to create a ui like this this one so here you can see i have created uh, three input boxes one is for item id one is full name and another is age I have also uh, added one table here uh, which will show all the items from the backend list. So to create this HTML and also I have added these five buttons. So all the HTML is written in this file. So you can see uh, uh, this div. So this div contains the item ID label and the input box for item ID. Full name and input box for full name. So just copy this entire JSX and open the TSX file and just replace this. Okay. So you can format it. Okay. Now you can see uh, we have added the HTML for uh, item id full name and age also uh, this is a blank div for uh, appending the table now you can see i have also added five buttons which will 
call these individual functions to perform different operations. Now you can see we are getting error because we have not defined the definition of these functions. So let's see what are the next steps. Now import the PNP module in the TSX file. So these are few uh, um, important modules that we need to import in our TSX file. So just import them here. Then the next step is add these functions for CRUD operations. So now you can see here uh, we have written different functions for create operation, uh, get item ID, get all items like that. So let's uh, see first function. I'll just copy the create item function first. I'll paste it here. So uh, where, where do you need to paste it? If you uh, minimize this render function, you can see render function is closing here. So just after that render function, you can paste this create function. So here you can see one error will is not there now. So now we will see how, how it's working. So when we create a, uh, when we are calling this function, we are calling sp.web.list. So sp is basically a context of SharePoint and a dot get by title and employee details dot items dot add. So what we are adding, we are passing an object uh, as we generally pass in other uh, rest functions or in sphttp client method like that. So for example, we are passing the title as uh, document.getElementById full name. So this ID is basically we have defined in the uh, HTML that is the JSX. So we are reading that value. We are passing it in, in title uh, field and age field. And then finally we are uh, popping up one alert which will say item created successfully. And also we are uh, showing the what is the ID of newly created item using this add item variable. So, so this entire function we have written in add item. So uh, this will return us the uh, entire object of the created item. In that object we can say item add item dot data dot id which will populate the id. So we will see the functioning once we complete our entire code. Similarly uh, you can check all other functions everything is exactly same so it is self explanatory but i'll still explain it quickly so i'll paste remaining functions so here also you can see get all items functions is there so same sp.web.list dot get by title dot items dot get simple one line code for getting all the items and we are then uh, iterating the items using map function and we are generating one html for table and we are then appending that table as a dot in our html to all items id that we which we defined at the top then you can see get item by id here we are just passing the get item by id parameter so id will be your document dot get element by id and value we also have a validation here if id is greater than zero then only perform this operation otherwise alert please enter a valid item id then create item is we have seen update item and delete item same functionality okay all set let's see what is the next step after adding all the above function your spfx tsx file will look like this so let's minimize these functions yeah. so you can see we have create get item by id get all items update item and delete item i'll save this file then update your scss file with the below css so here i have also given the css so just copy the entire css uh, in upcoming videos i am going to explain you more on the css part how we can work with css in spfx but for time being just copy entire css from so once it is pasted just save the file okay now let's see what is the next step now uh, we just need to run the gulp serve so let's see 
okay the gulp sub is now running and it has opened the local workbench but uh, to connect with the sharepoint we need to open the sharepoint workbench so i'll just open the sharepoint workbench by entering the sharepoint workbench url I have also explained about the differences between local workbench and SharePoint workbench in my previous video. So you can go through those videos. Now click on this plus icon. And you can see uh, our web part will be there spfx-crud-pnp. So you can see here uh, it's working now on the local workbench. So now I'll click on read all. So it has pulled all the records from the backend list and shown in a table. So I'll add a record now. So for adding the record, item ID is not required. I'll add a full name only, test and age will be 25. I'll click on create. So you can see item created successfully with the ID 44. Let's check in the backend. So you can see this 44 ID is created. So I'll click on read all again. So you can see that record now I'll uh, read the record so I want to read let's say item number 37 so I'll just put the item number 37 here and I'll click on read so it has reflected here now I'll uh, click on update so let me update the age to 29 I'll click on update it will say item updated successfully I'll now click on read all and you can see the item is updated now I want to delete the record let's say ID number 37 so I'll put 37 I'll click on delete and it has deleted successfully I'll click on read all you can see that 37 is deleted so here you can see okay it got deleted so uh, to summarize the things uh, what we did is like uh, we have created one react framework spfx web part we have added the pnp module so after adding the pnp module we first need to initialize the spfx context once we initialize the context we can use that context in the tsx file so here we have defined the jsx uh, which will define our html we have then imported the pnp modules in the tsx file then we have written different functions that will get called when we click on different button and in this way we can perform the crud operation in sharepoint framework if you are still watching this video and if you like this video please do not forget to subscribe to our channel it will motivate us and also you can subscribe to this blog as well so that you will get notified for all the upcoming SharePoint related articles. Till then, have a nice day and finally thanks for watching this video.